Freedom of Business is the final stage of the Legal Complaints and Regulation Bill. And I call the Minister of Finance and Personnel uh, to move the final stage and open the debate on the bill. Minister. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. And I beg to move that the final stage of the Legal Complaints and Regulation Bill uh, do now pass. Mr Deputy Speaker, I welcome this final opportunity today to speak about the Legal Complaints and Regulations Bill, a bill which relates to certain aspects of the regulation of lawyers, in particular how complaints against lawyers are handled and are overseen. The new statutory framework for the legal complaints sets, sets out in this bill, coupled with the enhanced oversight from a legal services oversight commissioner, will I believe be of considerable value for consumers in Northern Ireland and for those people who avail of legal services. The scheme set out in the bill will shift the responsibility from complaints away from professionals, from the lawyers and more into the hands of laypersons. This was the key message that came out of the Bain report. That group found that the system here was actually working quite well but that it would benefit from a copper bottoming of the various aspects, most particularly in relation to complaints. In doing so, the group, and with this bill, we also, as lawmakers in this assembly, have recognised that devolved administrations are best placed to make decisions about issues at such a local level. Bain could have easily followed the recommendations and reforms that were occurring elsewhere but instead adopted proposals that it considered to be tailored for the issues arising here. That approach has been commended by many in this assembly throughout the progress of this bill. And I want today to once again place on record my thanks to Professor Bain and his team for that work. It has, as has been noted at various junctures, been a long time in waiting for these proposals to be enshrined in law. But today, I am pleased that we have arrived at a stage where that journey has almost ended, and we have a statute that is appropriate, proportionate, and has our stamp upon it. It was the now First Minister, my colleague Arlene Foster, who introduced the bill in the Assembly in June of last year, and she indicated at the time that this bill would help raise the profile of regulation and would enhance how complaints are handled. The bill was referred to the committee and I want to place on record again my thanks to the members of the committee for their work on this bill. The committee chair welcomed the bill at second stage but indicated that the committee would look closely at how it could be improved. That process, undertaken mainly in the autumn, was a very constructive one and it has led to the bill that we have in front of us today. They thought the, through the work of the committee, it led to a number of amendments uh, that I was content to bring forward at consideration stage and which have helped to improve this bill. And I believe that those additions, uh, we will have an act that is strong and fair and will greatly assist anyone who has a problem with their lawyer and will help them get, I trust, a satisfactory resolution. The committee did come back to the issue of first-tier complaints and the bill as amended has reflected on that issue and will, I believe, lead to improved outcomes in that particular area. So I commend the work of the committee and the interaction that it has had with my department, and I believe it serves as another good example of how a department and a committee can work together in a constructive manner in the delivery of good legislation. Mr Deputy Speaker, I will draw my comments now to a close by welcoming the bill. It has been uh, at times lengthy, also at times frustrating, but I think the journey has nonetheless been worthwhile. I believe that its final destination will see what uh, the member for North Belfast, Mr Alba McGuinness, described uh, at an earlier stage as a good piece of law. It will lead to an improved complaints handling regime for lawyers will bring with it more openness and transparency and will deliver a proportionate and fair outcome to all involved in the process. Accordingly, I commend the bill to the Assembly. 
I now call the chairperson of the committee for finance and personnel, Mr. Dahi Mackay. As members will be aware, this bill will bring about a significant and long-awaited uh, reform of the existing system uh, for handling complaints against solicitors and barristers. What has been described as uh, a copper bottoming of the present complaints handling arrangements here will include, amongst other things, uh, a shift to lay person led control with enhanced powers and oversight, uh, including through the establishment uh, of the post of Legal Services Oversight Commissioner. The Commissioner will therefore play a key role in overseeing the complaints process and through this legislation will hopefully have sufficient powers and the necessary teeth uh, to take further action where the required standards have not been lived up to. A fundamental, fundamental concern of the Committee throughout its scrutiny uh, was around the need to capture information on complaints against solicitors made at what is referred to as the first tier and whether the current published figures represent only the tip of the iceberg and do not present a full, fulsome picture. Arising from the Committee's concern, as the Minister has already referred to, uh, the Bill was amended to take account of this and to empower the Oversight Commissioner and the Law Society to require members of the profession to provide reliable data on the number of complaints. Whilst I suspect this may see an increase in the number of recorded complaints, this will equalise over time and provide a reliable baseline of information. This primary legislation will also lead to important subordinate legislation, including in terms of the levy uh, that will be payable by barristers and solicitors uh, who will fund the costs of the Oversight Commissioner's Office. This will require close scrutiny in order to ensure the costs are proportionate uh, and do not needlessly overburden the legal profession, especially in regard to small practices. The Committee acknowledges the contribution of all stakeholders all stakeholders, uh, particularly the responsiveness of the responsible DFP official, uh, Mr Michael Foster, in seeking to provide clarification, explanation and assurances uh, on issues arising from the evidence. Because, uh, In this particular uh, example, Alas Kankor, uh, as the Minister has already referred to, uh, the Department did take into account the views of the Committee and made some reasonable uh, and worthwhile amendments, which is not, unfortunately, always the case when it comes to departmental officials and committees. Uh, so, in this instance, I think it is a very good example of how the Department and the Committee should work together. Whilst the Committee was prepared to bring forward a number of amendments to strengthen the Bill, the productive relationship uh, between the Committee and the Department resulted in the necessary amendments being tabled by the Minister. I believe that the additional amendment from the Committee to provide for a statutory review mechanism will also offer a further element of assurance. The Bill also reflects changes that will support and facilitate the legal profession in terms of placing a greater emphasis on client care. For instance, arising from the evidence from the Law Society, the Bill will address the concern around the ability for any apology to be used as evidence of liability uh, in civil proceedings. This will make it easier for lawyers to apologise to their clients where things have gone wrong and where the necessary standards have not been met. I am sure the members will accept that in many cases when something has gone wrong, a genuine apology is often enough to satisfy the complainant at an early stage. Finally, in terms of effective scrutiny, uh, I consider that the experience of this bill demonstrates how constructive engagement assists the legislative process and provides better laws for our citizens. This should be seen as another example of how this locally elected institution is delivering sol solutions tailored to local circumstances. I, ask Coyer, I acknowledge that the new arrangements provided for in this bill will take time to bed in. Therefore, I will look forward with a keen interest to the implementation of the legislation and the outworkings of the statutory review, which will provide a further opportunity for the Assembly to scrutinise progress in this important area. I call Ian McRae. Good every speaker, and like, like the chair, I, I'll be brief, if not even um, less um, to say than, than he did, given that he has the um, function of the chair to go through the details. So I will resist that, but I think it is important that, um, joining the, the comments of the chair, that th this is, I, I have no doubt, in, in, in scrutiny terms, um, certainly in 
as long as I've been in Assembly, it's certainly evidence that the, the good relationship between the, the Department and the, the Committee um, and the, the work that that, um, that that went on in respect of ensuring that any concerns that the Committee had and, and the stakeholders that came before the Committee had were being uh, listened to and addressed um, by the Department. So I think it's important that we do uh, again put that on record in respect of um, how um, that the committee and the, the department can work together to deliver a good piece of, of legislation. Um, as far as this bill is concerned, and, and again the minister has outlined, and I don't want to um, you know, regurgitate things that have been said, but uh, uh, something that I um, liked what Alban McGuinness said and, um, uh, in his comments in the previous. Um, debate on this matter was that this is a, a local bill and it's a local tailor-made solution in dealing with legal complaints here in Northern Ireland. And I think that's an important aspect of, of this bill. But all in all, I have no doubt that um, when, when the bill does um, come into law that uh, the bill will make a, a major difference in how legal complaints are dealt with here in Northern Ireland. So I hope that this um, passes through the final stage. I call Leslie Cree. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. And I am pleased to be able to speak on the final stage of the Complaints and Regulation Bill here today. Uh, much of what is pertinent has been said, but this was not a root and branch reform, but it will bring significant change to the system and will establish the new position of Legal Services Oversight Commissioner. The committee has taken evidence from its stakeholders and published its report on the bill last December. As I said at the consideration stage of the bill, the detailed scrutiny by the committee has resulted in a range of issues being raised with the Department for clarification and improvement. Satisfactory amendments were made which improved and indeed strengthened the Bill. One such amendment that has been referred to already was the discovery of information on first-tier complaints, which I believe is very necessary. The Committee's scrutiny of this Bill has been an excellent example of how the Department has worked with the Statutory Committee to improve draft legislation. I would wish to record my thanks to both the committee staff and indeed the department officials for the excellent way in which differences of opinion were resolved. Mr Deputy Speaker, on behalf of the Ulster Unionist Party, we will support the final stage of this bill. Thank you. I now call on the Minister of Finance and Personnel, Mr Mervyn Storey, to include the final stage. Uh, thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. And can I just express a word of uh, appreciation and thanks to members of the committee who have contributed to the debate this afternoon and also particularly to thank the Chair and the committee members for the, the work uh, that they have, uh, alongside my officials, have ensured that we have today come to this stage in relation to this piece of legislation. Uh, I think it is an example, and I have said this on other occasions, when uh, we do set ourselves to bring forward legislation that there is a relationship between both the department and the committee in relation to ensuring that we have an outcome. I do take the point that has been raised by Mr Cree in relation to uh, being not being root and branch. However, I do think that uh, it is a good start. I think it is the right place uh, where we have commenced in relation to what was needed. And I look forward to seeing uh, royal assent being given and this becoming uh, legislation. So therefore, uh, a word of appreciation also to my own officials for the work that they have done uh, in relation to the work that they had to uh, bring to the committee and also in preparing all that was necessary in regards to uh, the work here in the House. And I want to uh, personally thank them for that work that they have done. And so therefore, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, I thank all concerned uh, and I commend the bill to the House. Members, the question is that the Legal Complaints and Regulation Bill do now pass. All those in favour say aye. aye. Contrary no. The ayes have it. The ayes have it. Uh, can members take their ease uh, for a moment before we move on to the next item of business? <laughs>